Shalom, Shalom, peace. What's going on, y'all? It's a man of Monday. You know what time it is. That's right. It's time for another DSTM. Don't shoot the messenger. Episode number 164. All praise, honor, and glory to the most high. Why you shy? It's your brother Amath. I acquire first name. IQ is all the same. Right. I want to welcome you to this man of Monday edition. Uh when you come on in here, you know what time it is, man. Rules of the house still stand. Wipe your feet when you come in. Hit the like button so we can go ahead on and uh, do whatever these algorithms demand in order for them to uh, cooperate with the circulation of the content. Uh, if you don't, it is what it is. Appreciate you still watching, you know. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm just going to run through a few stories or articles, I should say, um, with brothers and sisters, man, some pertinent things uh that i uh thought was uh worthy of sharing you got japan they're bracing for war with china you know they just came out for that g20 meeting last week uh we covered the article last week where china said prepare for war so uh xi jinping is out here making big time threats to multiple nations not only just america but china uh slow biden is you know paranoid a little bit um concerning what could happen between china and taiwan he's saying nothing's going to happen he, he spoke to xi jinping and they had a good meeting everything's okay but you can tell him anything and he'll believe it i mean he says anything and hopes that everyone else believes it <laughs> so good luck with that slow biden um you got amazon laying off ten thousand employees this week as the uh future economies of uh multi uh, you know the tech industry all these multi uh billion dollar corporations are starting to show the real ugly side of what's going to be happening with the rest of the economy i mean you got to imagine man if you got these big companies the tech industries from you know um zuckerberg he just laid off eleven thousand from from meta uh coinbase had layoffs redfin which is a um uh, uh, a real estate company, Zillow, another real estate company. They're doing all, all them doing layoffs. Amazon now doing layoffs. Amazon uh, canceling the constructions of future warehouses. What's that mean for the small businesses? What's that mean for the little guys in the near future? What's that mean for households? Right? I got another story that's um, one of the biggest. Um, uh, Dispatch truck trucking uh, companies is doing major layoffs. So just the import and exports from the trucking industry, they're experiencing economic meltdown and uh, the need to downsize. So uh, make no mistake about it. We talked about this in the summer. They said six to 12 months, 50 percent of corporations and businesses will will be laying off so so far so good with that being um spoken on um you also see in the in the in the, in the title in 666 a death omen very interesting story so i'm gonna bring out my son actually brought it to my attention um we're gonna share to share those things man I'm, I'm not trying to spook nobody out i'm not trying to say that this is quote unquote scriptural we know that 666 is only mentioned in the bible re regarding the name uh the number the name of the beast in, in revelation 13 but it's just ironic how uh these numbers you know added up in the deaths of people but let's get to it man i'm not gonna you know tease no more about what, what we're gonna talk about we're just gonna get right to it man let me share my screen and let's let's make it happen all right let's go a uh, go all right so uh as we mentioned before on the wars and rumors of wars front the uproars of the people you know there's still massive protests they got protests going on in in uh i believe in europe i, I want to say in, in particular france has got uh some more rioting going on over there more more protests going on over there i mean the, the world is still in a complete uproar man so uh, uproars and the risings of the people. Wars are still being discussed. Uh, you see North Korea launching off uh, multiple 
uh, missile tests, one of which went towards Japan. They went and, and, and braced for impact. They ran drills and told everybody, be prepared, watch out. We think we're under attack from North Korea. Then North Korea did it again to South Korea. So North Korea is really loose with it, man. And North Korea knows that China has their back. So this is why Japan now is starting to brace for war. So uh, let's look at this. Japan is bracing itself for uh, war with China. One of the world's most popular, so like most powerful countries has been sworn to pacifism. China's increasingly worrying actions are forcing it to reconsider. Notice how they got pacified, man. They got hit with that damn bomb. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, America completely humbled Japan. Then gave them a little, little reparations and, and created, um, you know, trade agreements with them and said, you know what? Don't ever try to rise up against us again in your life. And we'll be, we'll be friends from here on out. Japan said, yes, uh, yes, white man. So they've sworn to be peaceful. But now they got to reconsider. Japan is worried. A close neighbor is talking tough. It wants to. It wants control over Tokyo's southernmost islands, shipping lanes, and oil reserves. Now that talk is relentlessly mar marching towards action. Prime Minister Fumio Kishida last weekend pledged he would prepare to face aggression. We must prepare ourselves for an era when actors emerge to, to disobey rules and use force or threats to destroy the peace and safety of other nations. Kishida said as he addressed an international fleet review in Tokyo Bay. We will accelerate realistic discussions on what's needed to defend our people by keeping all options on the table. That's more complicated than it sounds. Japan has a district pacifist nation constitution. Like Japan has a strict pacifist constitution. It was adopted after World War II as a result of its invasion of China in 1937 and attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. See that? So Japan now has to go back on their word. They say, we'll never get aggressive again. We'll be cool until now. So that should only let you know the climate and the spirit that the Most High has put out there. You know, we covered the scriptures before. And, um, you know, and for, in, for instance, 2nd Ezra 16, where the Most High said, we'll be unto Asia. And the Most High said, that, you know, sackcloth is going to be their clothing and mourning. And, you know, the Most High's, uh, you know, drawn the uh, drawn the bow, and who can make it turn back? You know, paraphrasing those verses. So even Japan now has to reconsider and says, "Like we we don't want a war, but guess what? The spirit of the Lord is invoking war all throughout the world. That spirit is there. Same with you know Russia. Russia didn't want to go to this war with you Ukraine, but Ezekiel thirty eight said otherwise, right?" So let's look at this next story. Suspect in custody in Istanbul blast that killed six and injured 81 officials say. Now they're saying that this was a terrorist attack. In Turkey, six killed, 81 injured. A suspect is in custody related to an explosion that killed at least six people and injured at least 81 others in Istanbul on Sunday. Turkey's interior ministry said early Monday. The incident has been deemed a terrorist attack. Turkish Vice President Fuat Okte said Sunday, according to the state news agency An Anadolu, we consider it to be a terrorist act as, as a result of an attacker whom we consider to be a woman detonating a bomb. A woman. Everybody's on the table right now, right? So, Turkey now is facing uh, aggression through uh, terrorist attacks. They're still trying to figure out who it could have been or what nation or what terrorist group could have been involved in. But we see here that just this past Sunday, just yesterday, terrorist attacks, six killed, 81 injured in Turkey. Oh, look, look at these guys. They were going out celebrating veteran. I think it was a veterans day or, you know, doing some, um, uh, air show. And uh, look what happened to them. The six airmen who died during Veterans Day's Wings Over Dallas show when B a B-17 collided midair with Bell P-63 
King Cobra as spectators watched in horror. Experienced pilots were captains for Air American Airlines and United. These guys are out there doing this little air flight show for Veterans Day and smashed into each other in, in midair. That's what the most high feels about America's veterans. You know, this is the pride and joy of Babylon right here. Smiling and grinning. And the most high took them out. Interesting though. This also happened over the weekend. Arrest after six hurt when car crashes into a LA street carnival. Stephen Weems, a resident of Mississippi was arrested late Saturday Hours after the Porsche uh, Cayenne crashed through a cement rail and into the carnival. Los Angeles, a 23-year-old man was arrested on suspicion of felony hit and run after authorities said he drove through a crowded weekend street carnival while being pursued by police in South Los Angeles, injuring six people. Six people. Six airmen. Six dead in turkey six dead in turkey six dead airmen six injured in la now that's why i said very interesting right very interesting that we see those numbers and i'm not saying hey we're into numerology all of a sudden but we know there's significance in numbers you know we speak about the number three, number seven, uh, 40, you know, in the scriptures or whatnot, right? So what I'm saying is, is that according to the scriptures, Sirach 5 and 15, be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or small. It's just to pay attention to it, just to take note of it. What kind of spirit and what kind of issue was going on that uh, the Most High has brought those particular numbers together three times all within the same weekend within like you know 24 to 48 hours of each other just thought that was interesting like i said my son brought that to my attention i said yeah that is kind of weird so again got six got killed in turkey that was sunday i think this was saturday veterans and then you had another six got killed last saturday Stephen Weems, oh, we, we did read that already. All right. So that was just ominous to me. To me. Take it for what you will. But the most I said, don't be ignorant of any matter, small or great. Let's continue. Amazon plans to cut 10,000 jobs, roughly 1% of its global workforce. So, you know, they try to downplay it. Oh, it's only 1%. But imagine if you're one of those 10,000 that lost your income, that you no longer have a way to provide for your family or for your own self. Right. Imagine the debt that you're going to be encountering. With inflation and everything else of the economic climate that we're in right now, is it a good time to be unemployed? I mean, unless you got some side hustles going on or you got your little gig economy going on and all that's going to be coming down to a crashing end because of how this tech industry is getting hit up. The crypto, they just got to talking about that FTX, that uh, crypto exchange that was just one of the major crypto exchanges. Uh, that were being utilized by many people are now they're starting to say that this whole thing was a scam. And the dude that ran it is on the run. Something to that nature. You know, I got the story here. Let me see. Hold on. I don't want to misquote it. Uh, do I got it here? Let me see. No, it's not the one. I thought I had it. I didn't want to misquote the uh I didn't want to misquote the article. Give me one second, y'all. I think I got it though. All right, Shalaki, here we go. It's a little off off the subject, but nonetheless. Uh Sam Bankman, imagine that type of name, Bankman. 
Bankman Freed faces criminal probe for gambling FTX investors cash on Alameda Research as crypto exchanges try to calm market, uh, try to calm the market while traders pull six billion in a week. Bitcoin is plunging, it's down to 16,000 now. Remember earlier this year, well, maybe last year, Bitcoin was at 60,000. I think they maxed out at less than a year from now. Everybody said it was going to 100,000 by the end of the year. Oh, Bitcoin is going to go. Look where it's at now. I don't know much about the crypto sphere. Everything is a gamble in my eyes. And as being a former gambler in the world, <laughs> you, you never gamble anything. You only gamble what you can, you, you're prepared to lose. You know, the degenerates will gamble what they're prepared to lose, what they didn't prepare to lose, and they're going to borrow to lose some more. But you got to know when to get out. You got to know when how, how much you're willing to spend. And you're going to take some losses just because you got so addicted to trying to get, get some of that money. I wasn't no super heavy gambler, but if some, somebody was shooting some dice in the streets, I was jumping down there trying to get, 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 a, get a part of the money back in my day. But this whole thing, the crypto thing, and the stock market, in my eyes, in my estimation, is the, again, is just a gamble. And a lot of people gamble with this guy. I mean, this, this cat man, he was endorsing the, the Democrats. He was sending uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, I ain't going to say hundreds of millions. I don't want to know the exact amount. But I know he was definitely donating millions of dollars for these particular primaries to keep the Democrats in office. So they took dirty money. Uh, they had, um, what else did he do? They just said that they pulled, pull, um, they, uh, before they filed bankruptcy, they down there pulled out a billion, almost a 900 something million, almost $900 million and ran off with it. They're based in the Bahamas. And this dude's only like 30, a little more than 30. This guy right here. Straight nerd, man. Revenge of the nerds. They out here really getting back at everybody that did them wrong in the in the in the world, boy. That's what I consider this. You know, they did the um Bill Gates and all the men's revenge of the nerds. If you remember that movie back in the 80s, uh for for those that that, that was alive or uh conscious. And those 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 eras, you know, I was a kid when them them um, Revenge of the Nerds movies was out. But it was uh, you know the payback for all of the bullying and everything. You know the nerds was on one. They, this is real life stuff now. So the collapse of FTX under investigation by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. The probe puts founder Sam Bankman Freed under the threat of criminal charges in the U.S. Traders have pulled six billion from leading exchanges. Since the beginning of the crisis, the head of Crypto.com, a top 10 exchange, insisted that it's business as usual. That, that, you hear that code word? This is business as usual. Now, he's saying it. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Your money is safe. We're, we're, you can come in and do your money, get your money out and continue trading all you want to. It's fine. But the real key is, is this is how we're doing business. We're scamming. We're, we're not... Um, you know, playing fair, pyramid schemes. That's the business as usual. That site saw tens of millions withdrawn across a 10 and a half hour period this weekend. Yeah, because once people start seeing that these um these crypto exchange companies, man, and these block blockchain uh technologies, man, was was gaffling and locking up their money and ciphering it into private accounts, people was like, hell no, give me my money. So you've seen a big bank run through these crypto accounts, and now you know they were running around talking about, hold on, we 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 can't uh we got glitches going on, we can't get your money out. You know, and here 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 goes the mastermind right here. So foul play going on. Look at these guys, man. Look at these big, big, big head, you know, nerds, man. Alien head nerd dudes, five head. Out here running big time money schemes. Right? Let me get back on subject. 
really what we're talking about is the economy man so amazon suffering major losses they they don't consider it but i mean you're talking ten thousand people man that's a lot of people to be laying off and they just try to minimize it and say well that's only one percent of our global workforce you know so don't worry we're not really experiencing losses we still got 99 percent of the workforce still still hustling workers in its devices organization retail division and human resources will be affected in the largest jobs cut in the company's history again you always know me when you start hearing that word um uh, first ever largest ever historical this that and the third that means times are shifting it's a whole shift in the paradigm man now now we're entering into uncharted waters amazon executives are set to lay off 10,000 people in corporate and technology jobs as early as this week according to the new york times the cuts are primarily will primarily focus on amazon's devices as well as its retail division and human resources if the company goes through with the proposal to cut down 10,000 jobs it will represent a loss of three percent of amazon's corporate employees but it would be less than one percent of its global workforce of more than 1.5 million was primarily comprises of hourly workers so stay tuned look at this sheriff in california county with 65,000 people will stop all daytime patrols due to a catastrophic staffing shortage no daytime patrols coming and all the democrat voters they love the defund the police idea <laughs> until you know they they smashing and grabbing in your neighborhood and you know ransacking stores and robbing robbing old ladies and sisters on the streets you know oh then it's, it's not cool <laughs> but look at this a county in california with one of the highest violent crime rates in the united states is getting rid of daytime patrols by the local sheriff's office one of the highest violent crime rates in the u.s in this particular county and the police said we we can't ha we ain't got the staff we can't afford the patrols holler at us at sundown Tahama County, about 120 miles north of the state capital in Sacramento, is ending daytime patrol because employees keep leaving. This could prove dangerous as the county's most populated city of Red Bluff has a violent crime rate higher than 90%, 97% of the country. That's news to me. I've never even heard of Red Bluff. But California is so damn big. I mean, who, who would? So they're at the north, up north. outside of uh, sacramento and they said they've got a violent crime rate that's higher than 97 percent of the whole country and they're getting ready to shut down daytime patrols up there and people talking about chicago purge laws <laughs> go go move to red bluff man you about to talk about that because it sounds like that's what they're getting ready to experience the sheriff's office released a statement where Sheriff Dave Hencraft admitted that it was this was to manage a catastrophic staffing shortage throughout the agency. A Facebook post from the sheriff's office laid the blame with the county administrators and the board of supervisors. So um, all hell is probably going to break loose up there. Look at it. A California megachurch elder. Elder. 49. And her father. Did you hear that? The mega church elders of female number one, but she cooperated with her father in killing her adopted eleven-year-old daughter. Where, where's where's um you know uh, Hocab Malone and the rest of the uh, Christian apologists? Where, where are they at to stand on the front lines to defend the church, or to go out and condemn the actions of this church? Are they, are they going to speak on this? Where, where's the rest of the, the, the Christian community? Are they going to rally around this incident? Or are they just going to, you know, ignore it? Because they love to get in the Israelite business. They love to get in our, our little business every any, every time and any time something goes on. They're all speaking. Everybody's involved with the Kanye and the Kyrie situation. Well, let's talk about this. California megachurch elder, 49, and her father are charged with the murder and torture of her adopted 11-year-old daughter whose dad killed himself in front of cops on the day she died. 
Arabella McCormick, 11, died on August 30th after police responded to a call. Adoptive mother Letitia McCormick, 49, and her father Stanley Tom have both been charged with murder, while grandmother Adela faces abuse charges. Adoptive father Brian McCormick killed himself when confronted by the cops. Arabella McCormick had been a member of the Rock Church in San Diego. Toriana Flory, the biological mother of Arabella and her sister, told the San Diego Union Tribune that she lost custody. Arabella was adopted in 2017. So the father and the mother and the grandfather. Now, the father kills himself in front of the cops. He probably has something to do with the abuse and the, and the death. He couldn't take it. Killed himself in front of the cops. Leaving his wife and grand and grandfather or father-in-law to deal with the repercussions of killing an adopted 11-year-old girl. Now, the Rock Church in San Diego. Let's look at this one. I'm curious. I'm curious. Let's see what this church looks like. It's a mega church, huh? Let's see how big they are. Oh, oh yeah, they really out there, man. Look, look at them. They're waving. They're praising. Join us on Sunday. I think not. Oh, they got a church in Point Loma, San Marcos, El Cajon. Look at this. You talking big boys? Got the church campus. They out there singing and praising and worshiping and Chula Vista. They holding concerts. I mean, so far I've seen nothing but entertainment. You seen anything that had anything to do with preaching? Anything that had to do with upholding the scriptures? You know, and oh, here they got a little prayer circle. That's what happens when you have the heathen running stuff, man. It's so little Negro acting like he got baptized. But look at this. Everything is entertainment. They know how to reel you in. Look, jumping for joy. See what they up to. First thing they want to advertise is a concert. Imagine that. And then got one of their elders, man, a damn murderer and an abuser of kids. Anybody going to speak on that? No, they're going to let that one slide. They ain't going to come out and condemn this church, the elders, who else may have known, who who doesn't, who, who knows? Are they going to go out and have a whole conference about why this was wrong and maybe they need to start looking at the, the laws of God more seriously? No, nah, they're not going to do that. They ran by some heathens. But as you can see, there was some sprinkles of jakes up in there. Let's move on. C.H. Robinson announces the largest layoff in the history of freight brokerage this is the one i was talking about one of the freight brokers for uh one of the largest um uh freight broker companies for trucks they're laying off see this is it's not just tech giants and wall street firms anymore as freight waves reports truck brokerage giant ch robinson worldwide inc is laying off between a thousand and twelve hundred employees most of whom are at the vice president and general manager level According to sources familiar with the situation, the move, as FreightWave CEO Craig Fuller reports, might be the largest layoff in the history. Oh, there we go again with that word. In the history of freight brokerages not related to a bankruptcy or acquisition. So it said this has nothing to do with bankruptcy where they, you know, the company's going to collapse. Or them being bought out by another company and them having a downsize. They're downsizing payroll. They're downsizing so that they can maintain. It's not at the point where they need to, you know, file for bankruptcy to save the company. They're being proactive. My job. They're 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 um being cutting heads of the higher ups. And from my knowledge, they said that they got notification, like in the summertime, that they were told certain positions wasn't going to be needed anymore basically they they chopping down the big them pay them big payrolls 
that they don't need. And they're going to consolidate and they're going to throw more heavy fetters on others because they're going to say, hey, you're going to do b both of these jobs. You don't like it, we'll find somebody who, who can. But we got we to cut costs. That's how a lot of these companies is moving now. Let's move on. Crypto.com withdraws rise after CEO admits a transaction problem. Oops. See, that's the five head, big head guy. Another nerd out here running game. He runs crypto.com, another one of them crypto exchanges. People was trying to run to go get their money because they like, oh heck no. You know, a lot of people came up in the in the crypto sphere. But one thing I do see and I, I do hear <laughs> from the guys that 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 support and promote precious metals, and it's true. They always say, if you can't touch it or hold it, you don't own it. And that's real. Because if your money is caught up in an app, your money is caught up in some digitized platform that's got, you know, different regulations and somebody else is behind the keyboard that can press enter and delete. You don't own it. Now people are saying, oh, shoot, I need to cash this out. I can't just keep gambling and leaving my money with the house. Crypto.com withdraws rise after CEO admits there was a transaction problem. Concerns about the Singapore-based Crypto.com spread with digital currency traders on edge following the quick collapse of rival exchange FTX. Customers pulled funds from Crypto.com over the weekend after the company's chief executive said the cryptocurrency exchange mishandled roughly $400 million. And because there's not no real regulations, I don't know in particular, but in times past, when money came up missing or you couldn't get your money out, it was considered gone and a loss. Who are you going to complain to? That, who, what, who's custom, what customer service that you're going to you know, go to? What government regulators can you go to? What insurance company can you go to and say, hey, these guys took my money? It's gone. But that was the allure that everybody wanted to go to with the crypto. Oh, it's not regulated. The government can't trace it. They don't, you know, they don't know. It's your money. You making all this money on the side under the table, basically. See. And all these nerds, they knew it. They said, man, we're gonna build this thing up, man. Once we're ready to pull these licks, we're gonna boop. Get this money and run. I think uh uh Netflix got a um special about the uh the hunt for the uh what's it called? Damn, I don't want to misquote it. That has something to do with the bit bit uh some some cat man um uh, with Bitcoin and uh pulling and pulling the lick off on people. But anyway, uh crypto.com chief executive Chris Marzelic said on Twitter that the transfer was sent to the wrong type of account on another exchange. The transfer of a large chunk of ether or ethereum, a popular cryptocurrency took place on October 21st, but came to light after Twitter users flagged the transfer as unusual based on publicly available blockchain transaction records. So there you go, the tech heads, oops, pressed the wrong button. Transferred all your money to the wrong accounts. Sorry. Dangerous game people is playing out there. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting. I'm not going to, like I said before, I've dabbled in it. I've tried, you know, I'm not heavy into it. I don't really know all about the technology, but I've dabbled in it a little bit and uh, cut my losses a long time ago. <laughs> so I, I'm not involved in the... Uh, I'm not I'm not exchanging with with this thing right now man I'm 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 sitting back watching Uh layoff spree in Silicon Valley spells the end of the era for big tech so there you go more more layoff t discussions Silicon Valley remember the tech industry that was the big the big deal man get get the meta get with all the tech valley uh, I mean the uh, Silicon Valley tech opportunists you know that that whole situation is crumbling right now over the past week, Silicon Valley companies have laid off 20,000 employees. A swift ramp up of the job cuts and hiring freezes that have been ricocheting through the tech industry for months. Twitter, Facebook, um, Parent Meta, payment platform, Stripe, software service firm, Salesforce. 
ride handling company lyft and a growing list of smaller companies all laid off double digit percentages of their workers that means tens of thousands of engineers salespeople, and support staff in one of the country's most popular so like the most important and highest paying industries are out of a job meanwhile other companies including google and amazon have recently uh instated hiring slowdowns and freezes so you know we see what's going on with the economy ain't nothing changing it ain't getting better it's only getting worse it's only getting worse um well there you have it y'all there you have it man another man of monday man all praise on and glory to the most high why you shot man make sure that you hit that like button on your way out if you haven't done it already man support the platform support messengers of the covenant motc is the name of the congregation man dstm is the name of this particular episode of content don't shoot the messenger this is episode number 164 man appreciate y'all tuning in always remember man fear the most high keep the commandments and lastly don't shoot the messenger